Hey, so this one is going to be another aimless ramble, as I always do. Um, I've tried to record this a few times now, but I just keep thinking of more shit that I want to say. Uh, so this might be a long one, um, but maybe not. We'll see. Um, particularly, uh, I, I'm sure I've alluded to it somehow in the title, um, something that has been on my mind... Um, Better yet, let me back it up a second. This has been on my mind because of the video going around of some dude. I think he said he's doing his thesis. And apparently his thesis is to walk around and ask people to choose in this false fucking dichotomy between LGBT rights or economic stability. And I guess... The, the the premise of this fucking gotcha question is that you can't have both. And I mean, you've probably all fucking seen it. The person with the ponytail that just clowns on this motherfucker and is like, actually, you can have both. And I, I feel sorry for the guy who, like, that's his thesis. Um, damn, bro. <laughs> I think you might have wasted your fucking money. Um, yeah, uh, that and the undying dumbass slogan of go woke, go broke. Um, it sure seems to have gone so poorly for Disney or whoever the fuck. Um, of course, there was the the Bud Light situation with uh, Dylan Mulvaney, who I had, had never even fucking heard of before. All of that shit happened, and I still have never seen any of their actual content. Um, it's fucking stupid. Uh, we'll we'll go we'll visit that one real quick first, and just get that out of the way. Um, so here, let me let me pose to you a hypothetical that is sort of an opposite of that situation in a way. Um, so I used to own a few products from this brand. Uh, there is a, a brand of vaguely sort of gender non-conforming ish underwear. I don't know how you would explain it. It's, I don't think they make any binders or anything like for trans men. It's just straight up. Like they make comfy sports bras and they have like a s more androgynous presentation to them called tomboy X. And I have owned a couple of their products before. They make comfy sports bras. What the fuck can I say? Um, that was a while ago, though. But uh, imagine if that company uh, decided to partner up with the Joe Rogan experience for a sponsorship. Um, and he began to advertise their products at the start of his show. Uh, how well do you think that would go over? Um, the problem is not that a brand went woke and so people revolted because nobody likes that. The problem is it was a brand that had built their entire fucking target audience out of this vaguely conservative-ish, like, traditional Americana sort of pandering, and then that brand tried to bring on a, a young queer tiktoker as an influencer to promote them so the problem here is that they they don't understand who is buying their product in the first place um they also don't seem to understand that a lot of people vaguely like me uh in my age range i'm 28 by the way for at least another two months um people in my age range and vaguely sort of queer, queer adjacent, just aren't fond of beer in general. They think of it as, like, something that their dad drinks. <laughs> and so there's not a lot of interest. Now, that's not true for me personally. But I also, I still don't drink Bud Light because it's trash. Um, even, I will drink some trash. It just, like, I'm a Mickey's man. We'll put it that way. I like a good 40 of Mickey's or, like, some Coors Banquet um, you know, I am not a, a dignified and discerning individual, but it's just, uh, there are other options for cheap beer that are just better taste-wise. Um, 
So that and the association with like fucking, I don't know, middle-aged NASCAR fans, like, yeah, nobody, nobody like me was going to suddenly change their mind about Bud Light because they got Dylan Mulvaney to fucking advertise it. I don't know who that is and I don't care. Leave me alone. I'm drinking my Mickey's. <laughs> so that, that whole fucking fiasco, it's pretty cut and dry to me. It seems pretty simple if you spend about half a second or two thinking about it. Um, you know, when you, when you fucking pivot 180 on your fucking target audience, what do you expect? Um, and it would be the same way with Joe Rogan and the Tom Boy X thing. His fans would roast his ass hard. And the people who already liked Tom Boy X would also be super pissed off at them for partnering up with Joe Rogan. So they would be going anti-woke and go broke. It would be the same fucking problem, just in the opposite direction. Um, I, I don't see how that's hard to figure out. Anyways, now that we have had that unnecessary conversation about a topic that <laughs> should never have been a controversy. Um, yeah, the idea that this, this guy's thesis seems to be proposing that queer rights, I'm not, I'm not going to fucking say LGBTQ every time. That's a lot of syllables. Um, that people like me having rights is somehow like intrinsically opposed to economic stability um which again is the dumbest shit i've ever heard uh or at least a solid competitor i don't know i hear a lot of dumb shit um why <laughs> why is that so how explain how like okay one thing we already talked about the go woke go broke thing that's already dumb bullshit the end um I think the only other point I've ever seen made to this end is the birth rate situation, which has almost nothing to do with queer people. Uh, <laughs> I hate to tell you, even in societies that are like traditional and conservative and everything, like Russia has been complaining about their birth rate for a while. Japan is having problems with their birth rate. A lot of places like that. The problem with that is like, it's not because of queer rights or anything, because trust me, places like Russia are not making progress in that regard. Um, the problem is everybody's fucking broke. Everybody's working two fucking jobs. The women have to work too. They can't be stay-at-home moms or whatever like they used to be. And children are fucking expensive, and they get more expensive as time goes on, as does everything else. And wages are not increasing fast enough to compensate. Nobody can fucking afford kids. Nobody has time is <laughs> so why why would they want to have kids it's for a lot of people it's straight up irresponsible to do so um you know i would hope that you would want to ensure that you can provide the kid a decent life and the way things are right now someone my age most of us could not provide a decent life for a kid we're struggling to provide a survivable life for ourselves like, <laughs> I'm glad I'm sitting on a bed right now. When I came here, I had a yoga mat on the floor. Like, <laughs> fuck no, I'm not going to have kids. N number one, I don't like kids and I've never wanted to have kids. But even if I did, this would be a terrible fucking time to do it. I would, I would want to be more established. And that seems nigh fucking impossible to do. I've been trying to get into a trade apprenticeship. Here's the fucking, this is the funniest most god-awful, irritating bullshit on the face of the planet. Every place I fucking apply to, I will occasionally get, like, a call back and everything, and they're like, oh, well, what kind of experience do you have? And it's like, well, none. That's why I'm applying for apprenticeship instead of already being a journeyman. And they're like, mmm, we were hoping for somebody with experience. We don't want to have to train somebody. And it's like, this is a fucking apprenticeship, dumbass. Really? <laughs> what were you expecting? What is an apprenticeship for if not to train somebody? Um, it's fucking stupid. There was one of them, it wasn't even for the apprenticeship itself. It was a general labor position on a rail yard that they said you would get priority consideration for the possibility of being a diesel mechanic apprentice in the future, depending upon your performance as a general laborer in the rail yard. 
and they asked me if I had diesel experience. I said no, and they just fucking, the dude sighed. He fucking, he's like, Ugh. and it's, number one, very professional of you. Number two, like, this isn't even for the, this is before the apprenticeship. This is a general labor job that might funnel into an apprenticeship that might become, you know, might end with me being a journeyman. And you're pissed and disappointed because I don't have experience working as a diesel mechanic? <laughs> That's the fucking bullshit that we're having to face. Like, the cost of housing is fucking astronomical. And the problem with that is these fucking, like, property companies and landlords buying houses just to flip them or turn them into fucking apartments. They want to make them rent-to-own schemes or just straight up just rent-only, not rent-to-own, and sit on that property. And so everybody, all the fucking houses around here are for sale from a company that has shitloads of houses on their fucking roster, they're going to get a sale one way or another because people can't just not buy houses anymore. Um, so they get to charge whatever the fuck they want. And they want to charge a whole lot. And people, people who have houses will fucking get spam mail or random fucking texts and calls from these companies trying to give them a cash offer for their house. Which is, of course usually way undervalued but it's cash and so they're they're fucking banking on the fact that everyone is broke and struggling to fucking get them to take this cash offer that sucks just for the sake that it's fast cash and then once they get that property for less than its market value they're going to do the bare minimum to flip it they're going to paint over everything <laughs> you, some of you may have seen the pictures of like cans of food that have been left in cabinets and just sprayed over with white paint by dog shit landlords. That's what they're going to do. And then they're going to put it right back on the market for more than its market value. And so they've turned an easy profit that way. And if they can't get somebody to buy it like that, I mean, rent it, whatever. It, it fucking, I'm completely diverging here, but God, it drives me fucking insane. Like, everyone is so fucked right now. If you are under 50, you are fucked. You are not going to retire unless you're, like, in the top fucking 10% of the country. The entire bottom, at least 60%, never going to retire. Not going to see a single cent of any kind of fucking social security or whatever. Give up on that. Flee the country or accept that you're going to be flipping burgers until you fucking die. <laughs> Anyways. Um... You know, the, the inevitable decline and death of this country aside. Um, where was I? Oh, right. Okay. So, yeah, the, the, the economic stability thing, I, there's no... Nothing has been put forward to suggest that economic stability is incompatible with queer rights. Nothing with any numbers behind it. Um, it you know, they want to talk about the death of the family or whatever, which, again... Nothing to do with queer rights. Um, <laughs> I mean, especially, I saw just last night, I was laying in bed, scrolling through various fucking apps because that's, I'm I'm 28, that's what we do. I'm depressed and I don't have friends or a girlfriend. Um, I saw this fucking YouTube short where people were unironically, like, it showed the countries with the highest LGBTQ whatever acceptance and then the countries with the lowest. And, like, of course, it had, like, the, the fucking Giga Chad memes in the background for the countries with the lowest acceptance rate. And people in the comments, completely serious, like, wow, these, these countries are based. You know what the fucking countries were? Were, like, Turkey, Armenia, Saudi Arabia, and uh, Iran. <laughs> so, okay, you want to buy a plane ticket? You want to move over there? I mean, housing housing is going to be cheap over there. All you need is like a few thousand bucks in U.S. dollars. Convert that to the country of wherever you're going. Saudi Arabia may be a different story, maybe Turkey, but like Iran, you know, you're, you're going to be able to buy a house with that much money. You couldn't do that over here. Um, I mean, shit. One of the most homophobic countries on the planet has got to be Uganda or like Afghanistan. Those would be even cheaper. Very affordable places to live. So go ahead, buy your plane ticket. Tell me how your new life in Afghanistan goes, <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> Fucking stupid. And the places with the highest acceptance rate, of course, like U.S., Canada, Argentina. 
Maybe the U.S. sucks. I get the feeling Argentina has its problems. So does Canada to an extent. But I mean, versus Iran? Come on. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? God, stupid as fuck. I mean, some of the places, like Western Europe, Western European countries, Northern European countries, some of the places with the highest rates of LGBT acceptance and general sort of progressive attitudes in society. Also, some of the places with the highest human development index scores and the highest fucking reported happiness and shit like that. Great places to live by just about any measure. And they seem to have no problems uh, correlating that with their acceptance of queer people. Like, So it remains to be seen a case where granting rights to queer people sabotages the economy of a country. Um, you can make all of your arguments as to why you think it would happen, but until it does, I don't want to fucking hear it. <laughs> um, it's so fucking moronic. Especially because, like, for these places to be notoriously homophobic, for them to say that when we find gay people, we execute them, for footage to come out of places like Afghanistan or uh, the fucking, the parts of whatever territory they have left, the Islamic State, for them to release footage of them throwing gay men off of buildings, either A, they're executing random people who are not, in fact, gay, or they are finding gay people in their territory, which implies... That being really harsh about it does not stop it from happening. Which is obvious to me because, of course, these people, being horrendously stupid, think that there is a choice involved. And that if you show zero tolerance toward it, towards it in society, that choice will not be made. Which is not how it works, of course. Um, so it's fucking dumb. Uh, I wish it was a choice because it, it sucks to be this and attracted to women at the same time, like that makes dating so fucking hard. And if it was just a choice that I could make or unmake at any time, you would never have seen any of this. I fucking promise you. <laughs> like, I would go back to being accepted by my family. I would have never spent the mid to late 2010s homeless. I wouldn't have so much trouble fucking dating. I wouldn't have interviewers looking at me like I'm a fucking space alien in a job interview. If it was a choice, I would not have made this choice. Uh, you know, when did you choose to be straight? When when did you make that decision? You know, you fucking jackass. Um, so yeah, it doesn't stop gay people from existing. They will exist in your country. They just won't have any rights. You're going to be cruel to them. For no reason. And you're going to pretend that you somehow benefit economically from it. Um, no, you don't. <laughs> I promise you that. Um, and that's it. Uh, I don't... I don't. This is maybe going to be a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. But I just... You know, so much of it is just painfully obvious. And there's just a lot of people who are st really struggling so hard... To not see the obvious and to just deny anything that makes any fucking sense. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm not going to act like there's nobody on my side who is unreasonable and just completely fucking way out of left field. It, completely extreme and just beyond sense. Um, that's totally true. We definitely have people like that. Um, it's called X now. But it used to be Twitter. That's where they live. Uh, they used to live on Tumblr before Twitter got huge. Um, they just, for the most part, and thankfully, they tend to usually stay there. Um, <laughs> and there's a reason I'm not there. Um, but, I mean, God. Okay, so we can look at history. And we can see, like, for example, well, shit, I'll just fucking... This is not going to be the most flattering angle. And we're going to have to, like... Oh boy, you're going to see some loose skin. Get ready for it. So this, this fucking thing I have over here is... It's based on one of the statues of a Phrygian goddess from ancient times. Um, I believe English speakers nowadays call her Kibbele. Um, I heard... Uh, I follow this channel, Historical Italian Cooking. 
he called her Chibele, I think, or something like that. Um, the Greek pronunciation, which I, I do not know more than a couple of words of Greek. I think it was like Kiveli or something like that. Um, one of the most notable things about this ancient goddess um, and the reason why I got the fucking tattoo uh, is that her priesthood, at least in ancient Rome, I can't necessarily attest to it being like this in Greece or what was then Phrygia. Um, but at least in Rome, uh, in the pre-Christian time, her priesthood were, for lack of a better term, eunuchs, who after their like ritual castration would go on to live as women or something adjacent to it at least. There's some trouble actually discerning necessarily what they felt themselves because, number one, they were not kind to these people, unsurprisingly. But, number two, uh, even the sources at the time don't necessarily have a consistency between them as to what pronouns that they will use for the priesthood of the cult of Kibli. <laughs> so, this, this pronoun situation, by the way, has been going on at least since ancient Rome. Uh, we have sources from the time, from before it became a Christian empire, talking about it. Um, so, you know, number one, sorry to shit all over your day, but uh, <laughs> it's not a new thing. It's one of the things that fucking annoys me so much. Is that, oh, this is from the internet. This is because kids get on TikTok and it makes them queer. No, <laughs> they didn't have TikTok in ancient Rome. Um, and you have cultures across the world from their, like, pre-contact, pre-colonial times, however you want to term it. Of course, here in the U.S., uh, the indigenous peoples of our country, some of them had varying traditions. Today, they are kind of lumped in sort of under the term two-spirit. Um, but I know at least, like, the Navajo people had their own thing. Completely other different cultures, like, for example, the Sioux or Ojibwe, would have had other things because, of course, those people are not Navajo. The indigenous peoples of the U.S. did not all share one culture. Um, they may have had things in common from place to place, depending on who geographically was around them. But they were not all one people. Um, but regardless, a lot of them did have a sort of third gender or transgender role established in their culture before the Europeans ever fucking came here. You see the same thing even today in places like India, for example, I am not well-read on the culture of India or Bangladesh or Pakistan, uh, so please forgive me if this term is offensive, but the term I've heard is hijra, and they are considered a sort of third gender. They even have legal rec recognition in Bangladesh, um, you know, to some extent at least. Uh, you see, again, in Thailand... And once more, I apologize if this is actually an offensive term. We don't talk about it enough in the U.S. to really know about it. Um, Kathoe? Kathoe? I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced. Um, which is different from just straight-up trans women. There are, like, trans women in Thailand, and then there are also, separately, these people. Kathoe, Kathoe, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, again, this is not a new fucking thing. This has been around uh, even the Samoan people, um, I forget exactly what the, uh, Afafine or something along those lines, they have their own third gender role in their culture that existed pre-contact. So this is not just like the moral degradation of the West or the effects of social media on our kids or whatever, like... This has been going on for thousands of years across the globe in various different cultures that had no contact with each other up until the past, like, 200, 300 years. So, <laughs> like, it's, it's wrong. It's just, it's straight up factually incorrect that to be like, oh, this is only happening because of social media, because of, you know, Democrats, whatever. It's just... It is physically demonstrable as false, and yet so many people believe it. And even if they see this, they're still going to deny it. They're going to act like artifacts were planted, or like 
the, the writings of these ancient Roman sources were doctored somehow at some point. Whatever they have to do to live in fucking denial. Um, regardless, we've been around forever. Um, we will be around forever. And whether you give us rights or not is not going to save your economy from the fucking damage that you've inflicted on it yourself with your shitty practices. Um, if you want your birth rate to be higher, pay people more. <laughs> give them more time off. That'll do it. Uh, I promise you. Um, anyways, I'll, I mean, also, you know, fucking, there needs to be a lot more offered in terms of, like, childcare options and maternity and paternity leave. We could get into that whole fucking conversation, but it's not, it's not because of people like me. I was not going to be having kids in the first place, <laughs> number one, because I straight up don't like them. Stresses me the fuck out. Way too loud. Noise in general stresses me the fuck out. I don't even like dogs anymore. Dogs used to be my absolute favorite. Then I got PTSD and I can't fucking stand dogs now because they bark and it stresses me the fuck out. So I would not, I would not be good for kids. Um, it's not that I want to see bad things happen to them. I don't want to see bad things happen to dogs either. But I... It's not for me to live around them. So I wouldn't be having kids in the first place. Uh, so there you have it. Um, yeah, there's there's no... I've never seen a an argument that can be described as anything other than flimsy and farcical as to why queer rights is incompatible with economic stability. Go woke, go broke is not really a thing. That's just something that idiots say. Um... Yeah, uh, if you if you hate everything I've said, <laughs> go ahead and move to Afghanistan. I'll see you around.